No, fuck. I hope my feet didn't get in. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Hi, the lighting's weird. Welcome back to the Just Okay Podcast. I'm the host. You know me. You, maybe, Brittany Ledesma. I need to fucking get my parents to mail me my freaking Rodecaster Pro so it can play the old thing song Philip made for me. I wrote out what I was going to talk about. Why? Because that's how I have to do solo episodes so it keeps going. Um, today is... Just so y'all have a time frame of when this is posted. So I skipped last week. I got a part-time job. It is what it is. I feel like it looks stupid right here now. I got a part-time job and um, it's not bad. I work, I have a good schedule, but I'm up early mornings most days now. And I haven't had a job, like a real job. Like I worked at comedy clubs, but that was like fun. Like I was already going to be there, but I haven't had like a customer service job where I couldn't be a dick in years. It's been since like 2020. November 2020 was the last time I had a job like that. Um, so it's it's taken some getting used to and like having to remind myself, oh, I have to be nice to customers. And I am. I am. But I'm so excited about the bits about it. Students are moving back to NYU. I love, uh, you know, second college campus I've lived on, you know. As you get older and they keep staying the same age. Um, Monday, Abby and I, because Abby helps me run the New York freaky comedy show. I don't know why I keep doing this to compensate, to be like, yeah. <laughs> um, it was good. We had a really fun uh, show with a great lineup. A lot of amazing comics were on it. The next one is TBD. Um... But I was really happy with how this one went. We barked for like an hour and a half before the show. It helped get people in and we had ticket sales already. So it was a good turnout and I'm very happy about it. That's just a positive note for you guys. That's just like a little... There you go. That's what's going on. Um, someone in, I guess, went to a lake in Austin, Texas and died of a flesh-eating bacteria or like something from an amoeba. And it's like, honestly... Yeah, I remember because I grew up in Texas. People are acting shocked when it gets too hot and the lakes get so low. There is so much bacteria that builds up and it is disgusting. Like there is a couple years where dogs were not allowed to swim in Lake Travis because they would die. Like several dogs died. And then the lake, not lake, but like the river, they call it Ladybird Lake. It's not a fucking lake. It's a little river, a little river, little guy. And if you swim, you will get rashes most likely because it's a lot of gross stuff in there. And then if your dog swim, you, your dog will probably die. They have like signs for it everywhere. It's like crazy that there's so many things that are like tourist attractions in Texas. And it's like, but watch out because you'll die. Or it's like kind of gross. Like we also have like the bridge and it smells, you watch bats shit and fly away. It smells really bad. Um, 6th Street, the most disgusting place on earth. It's just the homeless people and then just like drunk rampages of like insane people and there's a bunch of horse poop everywhere because um, Austin believes, hey, you know what? Even if we defund the police, we're keeping the horses. They're refunded now, but that did happen. They got rid of like a task unit for like homicides and then a task unit for sexual assault. Cause it's like, well, you were raped, but here's a horse. <laughs> Does this help? I don't know. I miss Texas a little bit. I'm starting to realize I don't want my personality trait to be that I'm from Texas. Um, because someone was like, I'm trying to figure out how much is your personality is like being from Texas. So I was like, okay, I feel like it's not a lot of it. But then I was talking about like goats and stuff and how I miss my goats. And that just felt a little too on the nose. And I was like, ah, I don't like that. Like I may be from Texas, but I believe that women should have equal rights. But, you know, I also don't think women should work. So, <sighs> but yeah. I had like the worst bomb I've had in like a very long time last week. <laughs> like it was like my go-to jokes weren't working. They didn't like me from the start. 
the host came up and cleaned up my mess after and someone commented on it like an hour later was like yeah they were tight and I was like yeah thanks for bringing that up again <laughs> like I'm so aware of what happened and then another guy in the green room was like yeah man I wasn't even gonna talk about it like why the fuck would you bring that up it was so bad and I was like okay thanks I, I'm aware how bad it was um yeah it was a uh, not fun my friends were like I loved it and I was like yeah because it's fun to watch your friends bomb it's not fun to be that friend though because I love watching friends bomb I remember one of my favorite bombs I ever saw um was my friend Jordan at Native Hostel a couple years ago he is so funny he's very talented well, we're not really friends anymore but he's very funny and talented and he ate shit and I have never enjoyed it watching someone bomb more in my life um, but now he's a door guy at Rogan's Club, so look him up. He's funny. And then I also saw William Montgomery bomb on that show, too. And it made me so... Because I was like, this guy's hilarious. And it's also, like, kind of fun to see, like, your friends bomb and panic for a moment. Because you're laughing. Yeah. I love my friends, but I love to watch a good bomb. Um, I'm trying to not drink my freaking soda water so I don't have to edit this podcast anymore. Because uh, she's a working girly now. I also keep itching the back because this keeps hitting my back and I'm like oh my god is there a bug on me I have like a crippling fear of bugs in this city um they're everywhere I keep seeing those lantern flies I guess they're like an invasive species and boy it's what are what do they do that's what do they do I'm confused about how we keep saying they're invasive but what are they doing what are they here to accomplish that's the question no one's answering. Oh, lanternfly. Sorry, we're just trying to light up the street right now. Like, ugh, they sound kind of cool. Um, but also disgusting. Um, I ha was supposed to have a roast battle this week. I got postponed. Um, which the guy I'm supposed to roast has been pretty fucking difficult. Um, I sent him my info for it. Because we were originally supposed to roast this month. We found out a month and a half ago. And I sent him my information right away that's pretty normal is to just be like hey here's some info can i get some info back he left me on like on, like he like refused to open my message for like a month and sent me a link i already got the info from like five other people um but yeah and then of course he had a uh, commercial that day so it got canceled and so we have to do it later this month but i have that coming up on the 13th i'm excited for um, but yeah, it was like one of those, cause I love roast battle. I think it's a lot of fun and I think you should prepare in advance. So like the roast is more fun, you know, it's great when both people are putting in work and it just felt like, kind of like, I'm better than this vibe. And I was like, then don't do this. I have more tea, but we'll talk about it after it, but it happens. Um, I also, so it was supposed to happen yesterday, but I was, uh, I was either way, I was supposed to go to Astoria, that's where the show was going to be, and so I decided to hit a mic there instead, and then I grabbed Indian food with my friend Abby and her boyfriend, it was nice meeting him, but we went to this Indian restaurant, it was so good, great Indian food, but uh, I generally love lamb vindaloo, that's my freaking go-to, and I was about to, I was ordering that, and the guy was like, it's very spicy, and I was like, what do you mean, and he was like, on a scale of 1 to 10, it's 9 out of 10 spice. Like, he was, like, warning me. It's like, you don't want to go in there, bro. Like, it's like when someone, like, warns you about, like, the, like, scary haunted house on the street. Like, no, don't go in there. People disappear. It was like, he was, like, terrified for me. And then uh, he was like, order this instead at 7 out of 10. And I was like, I'm, I, I almost stuck to it, but he was so convincing. I was like, no, I'm going to listen to this guy. He is warning me. I ordered whatever he recommended. 7 out of 10 spice and I could barely handle that I was chugging so much water and you could I was trying to keep my cool but like the amount because they should just leave a pitcher of water on your table if it's that hot because he just kept having to come back and you know he was just like yeah I was right you little fucking bitch you couldn't even handle a 7 out of 10 spice and you want to order the lamb vindaloo um get out the kitchen if you can't handle the heat bitch or guys get out the dining room if you can't handle the he bitch so it's the same thing again there's no twist there but yeah it was um 
It was really good though, but it was also in the, it was the spiciest Indian food I've ever had. It was so good. I love spicy food. Um, but I definitely should have, because you know when something's spicy and also hot at the same time, it makes it worse. Like if it was like cooled down, but I don't wait. I burn the roof of my mouth all the time, constantly, because I can't wait. Um, and so I was just like diving in and it was uh, extra hard for me, but I pushed through and came out. Maybe not a better woman, but yeah, a little more well-rounded. I haven't had that spicy food in years. I ate ghost peppers once with my friend's husband because I wanted to prove my Mexican-ness to him because he was from Mexico. And I was like, yeah, well, I'm Mexican too. <laughs> I remember I had a ghost pepper plant for a while. I got it over the pandemic. And the thing is, I don't even like ghost peppers. I just saw it at like Home Depot. I was like, okay, that'd be cool. Not thinking, fast forward to four months, I'm in my kitchen. 11 p.m. 30 ghost peppers and I have to pawn peppers off of people just pushing peppers on people um, Because I don't like ghost peppers, but I didn't want them to go to waste and I was like, oh I, I it, That plant died in the winter freeze. I also had a serrano and a jalapeno plant A jalapeno plant. I and I use those all the time because I actually eat a lot of peppers when I cook at home um, And so that was nice. I'm just itching. I don't know what's going on. I have like such a fear of this city uh, maybe it's because I haven't showered today since this morning. I've been like waking up at 6 a.m. for work, which is so hard for me. Because like my friends were all so happy too. Because as a comic, I don't wake up early. I've, I generally, but I'm a morning person. So generally I would wake up at 9, 10 a.m., 8 sometimes. And then I finally got to the point moving here that I was get waking up at 10, 11 a.m., which is a big deal. I slept into 12 once. I told Dylan that, and he was like, I'm so proud of you. Um, but now I have to wake up at 6 a.m., um, which I don't mind. It's like the nap in the middle of the day that's like saves me. Um, but it is a little, it's a little much. Um, but I really like my job, so I'm really fortunate with that. I'm just fucking... Helping people tan, shaman in their future of leathery skin. I love it. Um, I don't know. I might get into. I might get into spray tanning. Brittany, she comes on as an oompa loompa next week. No. Um, what else is going on? Oh yeah, I wanted to talk about um, growing apart from friends. I hate when that happens and I feel like there it always it happens and then you kind of just have to let it go like you can't force someone to keep being friends with you it's also kind of like the fine line of like now you have to treat them like a guy you want to date but you like can't come on too strong anymore like you have to wait for them to text you because you texted first too many times and it's like sad because it's like in a way you're mourning this person who's clearly like just like, you know, y'all are moving in different directions and that's okay. It's just like sad because it's like you care about this person, but it just happens sometimes. I, um, one of the people who actually we grew apart, her and her boyfriend broke up. But the thing is, we've been friends since we were four and this girl always grows apart. We always like go through periods of our life where we grow apart, where she kind of just ditches me, is what it feels like. Um, like one day she'll just decide she's done answering the phone or she's not ever gonna call me and it sucks. But um, she went through a breakup with, I guess, her boyfriend, her new, her last long-term boyfriend. And so waiting for that phone call because <laughs> that's every time it happens. Um, also, like, I think it's so normal to grow apart from friends. It's just, like, the one thing I dread. Because, for me, I value... It's so fucked. I value friends more than I value hoes or guys I'm seeing genuinely. Because, like, friends, I, like, feel like you kind of, like... I'm not close with my parents, but, like, I feel like you can choose your own family. Well, I'm close with my I'm not close with my siblings. So, like, my friends are kind of like my family. And so it's a little hurt. It's a little hurt there but it is what it is it'd be that way but last year there were two girls that I was friends with and we both had falling outs um both of these girls though were like people I didn't initially really want to be friends with I saw like some red flags and I was like okay I'm gonna hang back 
Um, and then one of them, we, uh, I just felt like I wasn't getting what I was putting in. Like I was, ex a lot was expected of me, but then I wasn't getting that back. And that sucks. Or like, you know when like you see a friend, your friend's in a shitty relationship and keeps making excuses for it and it almost takes like a toll on your friendship and you're like, I think we're just not going to be as close anymore. Um, but when we stopped being friends instead of talking to me about it, because it was like a clear like one day I was just like, I'm not putting up with this anymore. She posted a YouTube video about it instead. And I was like, okay, that's fucking, it just felt like you were using me for content to start with. And then after that, cause she's like a girl who doesn't really have any talent, but wants to be like a TikToker. Like she just wants to be famous for no reason. And pop off if that's what you want. I mean, at least you know what you want, but um, it sucked. And instead of talking to me about it, she posted a YouTube video about it. And then she tells people to this day, it's because I wanted to fuck her boyfriend. First of all, I set them up. Second of all, I've wanted to fuck everyone at least once. Um, and I'm, I'm good. I don't want your man's girl. But it was just like one of those like, ugh. I hate it. I hated it. Because then it felt like our friendship was even more transactional than it already felt like. Because it felt like I was being used. There was a lot of weird stuff with money involved and her like trying to work for me. Um and my dad's company and uh so that was that was already a red flag and then like her posting the youtube video about it was just like oh you didn't care about me at all you cared more about the aspect of what i could give you and i still in the end of not being friends you still used it for clickbait somehow um yeah it's just gross to me i'm like why can't people just be fucking real like i don't know like i I've noticed some people here in New York and I'm sure even in Texas or LA and stuff people go to like go do hangs with like an ulterior motivation of like not just trying to like see their friends or check out a show but like they want to get something out of it and I feel like for me I'm never down to do that like if I go to something it has to be because I genuinely want to be there not because I'm trying to get something out of it like there's nothing I don't know I can't fake the funk. I wish I could sometimes, but I think it's a good thing. It's not like a bad thing to not be able to fake the funk, but still. The other girl who I had a falling out with, I did start the riff, cause uh, I said, I, when did she get so skinny? And it was out of my own insecurity and I didn't mean it that way. I just had never noticed how skinny she was till that moment. And then it really triggered her eating disorder. She said it was fine. And then she kept bringing it up for like four months. And I was like, bitch, this is like past like a normal point of like, like she told me she resented me while hanging out with me. I was like, then we just shouldn't be friends like at this point. Or like, you need to take your space, heal, and then come back and like, let me know when we're good. Cause like, I can't keep apologizing for the same thing over and over again. Um, like I've had so many instances with women where I'm like, wow, this was me in a relationship. Like, wow. As my ex used to call me, yeah, plunge it because you keep bringing up old shit. Yeah, I don't know. But, but like the thing about both of those girls was like I didn't pursue those friendships. They pursued them. In the end, it was like kind of like we had like weird falling outs. And that's the worst because then you're like, I gave you a chance. I didn't want, you know. But it is, I am happy that I had those times. Like we, for both of those girls, I took both of them on trips with me. And it, I don't know, it just, looking back, it feels a little used, but I like to, you know, take my friends on little trips. I think it's fun, and I'm very grateful for that. I like being called out by my friends because I need a reality check sometimes. Like, I'm such a, I'm not chaotic, I'm not insane, I'm generally well-grounded. I do, however, like, need someone to be like, hey, you're being a little crazy right now. Because I do. I do be acting weird sometimes um, and I feel like it's not as appreciated as often as it should be like you know like more people should strive to have real friends because it's like not all like a real friend won't just say what you want to hear they'll tell you what you need to hear and sometimes I need to hear that I'm being a crazy cunt you know like girl I don't know if you're on your period but go get some ice cream and relax 
it's not that big of a deal. I mean, I remember when I, um, my anxiety was really bad and, um, my depression was really bad and I just kept thinking everyone's talking about me and it's like, no one's talking about you. Like, if someone is talking about you like that, that's fucking weird. And it looks weirder when they do it, so just let them keep doing it because they'll just look like idiots eventually. It's just like, I rem the thing about comedy is it's so similar to high school sometimes with like all this gossip and stuff. I'd be putting my business out there because if something's going to be leaked, it's me. And because I put so much out there, you'll have no idea what actually meant something to me. But it's also like, people do be talking shit, but that's everyone. Like, no matter where you go in life, like, it's some degree of it is sadly still like high school. I don't know. I also had the realization recently that I guess I kind of look like a girl who was popular in high school because people keep telling me that. And now I, like, message the people I bullied. Hey, girly. Want some It Works, Arbonne, Essential Oils, all those pyramid schemes. Hey, want to buy some Mary Kay? No, I bullied you. Bull Fuck, I fucked up. Uh, whatever. But, yeah. The thing is, I wasn't cool in high school. A lot of people assume that. I went pretty under the radar. Like, I was... I went to, like, private Christian schools my whole life. Got really bullied at those. Not to brag. Wasn't Christian enough. Got bullied out of one dyslexic school. And then, by the time I was in, um... 10th grade, I went to a public school. I was like, I have such a fear of like talking to people, being embarrassed, being bullied again. I did my best to fly under the radar the rest of those three years. And I did. I was in culinary. I loved that. But I was friends with like the girls who loved One Direction because like I wasn't like a partier. I wanted to be, but I was also like such a pussy. Like I'm, I love rules and I know people. I know, like, I smoke weed and do, I do some of the drugs, and I was a stripper, and I have, like, an OnlyFans, but it's, like, a different OnlyFans. It's, like, art, you know? But, um, I love rules, and I always feel bad breaking them, and so I never did. I didn't even know what weed looked like till I, like, for the longest time, I thought it was the leaf. I didn't realize there were nugs. Um, like, my friend and I in high school, we were in culinary together. She's my best friend in, like, the whole world. She's been my best friend since, like... 10th grade, 11th, 10th, 11th grade, and her dad was selling weed, and we had no idea till someone told us, and then everything made sense, like, we were very oblivious, we would just stay in and watch, like, Trisha Paytas and Shane Dawson and Vlog Squad videos, like, it was just a different time, and, like, I... I started blossoming in college when I dyed my hair blonde and then I, it's like when the girl takes off the glasses when I dyed my hair blonde people were like wait but she's hot and I was like I've been pretty the whole time but okay but yeah I don't know what the point of saying that was but I I just wasn't I think it's interesting that people assume that of me like I was always kind of dorky and nerdy like I was like Rar in middle school like there are a lot of pictures of me I tried to scrub off the internet of me with like the Kesha glitter eye and doing this you know like I had my hair pitch black but my natural color was that I would dye it like different colors like red and like <laughs> like red like every other Mexican I would dye my hair red um and then I tried blue it turned green um yeah I ended up going pink and blonde and all these fun colors, but like in middle school, but not really even beginning high school, I was out of it, but like middle school, I was like really into like, I wanted to be into Invaders M. I thought Invaders M was stupid, but everyone else that liked Hot Topic was there and liked that. So I was like, okay, then I like Invaders M. Like I half ass my way into being like, rawr, XD emo, you know, how people didn't have emojis, so they would do XD for like a smiley face. Yeah. It's like just so weird to see people. It's weird to hear how you're perceived. Um, I did a podcast once where the guys just told me when they met me they thought I was an asshole. And I get really tired of being told that because like women, one, should come off more guarded when it comes to any man in my opinion. Like especially I feel like people don't ever care to figure out why they always assume it's a reaction because I hate them. And it's like no this is just me when you're meeting someone it's not how they feel about you it's an accumulation of all 
of who they are, the circumstance that they're in in that moment. And yeah, if I'm running an open mic and I want to go home and the list is full, I'm sorry, your fucking sob story about you not being able to sign up. I want to go home and sleep. That's just a deep cut from like four years ago. But yeah, I just get so tired of like these like people feeling entitled because a, I should be smiley and all happy. And if I don't, it's like, means I don't like them. I'm like, that does not mean that at all. But just take that as, I guess, I don't know. Whenever girls are rude in comedy, I'm like, I get it. You know, like I've been drugged at an open mic. I get having a hard facade. On. Like I would rather people think I'm a cunt than realize I'm nice than people think I'm nice and realize I'm a cunt any day. Last thing I'm going to talk about. I, so I have a job and first day of work, I get off and I went to summer camp seven years in a row. My first summer camp crush, I have like a letter where I mentioned him to my parents. Um, literally I saved it cause I was like, that's so goofy. How I've always been this way. It's in my apartment. It's so embarrassing. I mentioned this guy. His name is Woods. I'll say, I'll say his name is Woods. It's a variation of what, what are Woods? There's different terms for it, but his name is Woods. And, um, everyone was like, he's gay, he's gay. And I was like, no, he's not. And he kept like gaslighting women because men who are in the closet, sometimes they'll compensate by having sex with so many women and stuff like that. And be dicks to women. Um, anyways, didn't believe any of those guys. He used to, he literally gaslit me for years. Now he's like a... I don't want to say gay because I think he might be about, I don't know what he is, but he is a queer OnlyFans king. Pop off, you know, support a hoe. I love that, you know, as a OnlyFans person. I feel weird if I have act like I have stigma towards other people who do OnlyFans. Other people do OnlyFans so good. I don't have like an OnlyFans OnlyFans. Like mine is like picture like stuff I would post to Instagram that I now post to OnlyFans like an ass pic but instead I'm gonna put something depressing over it how many people die of cancer a day it's it says maybe on the photo I don't know like but anyways he has like an OnlyFans um it was so weird it was just like the coincidences of running into this kid but we follow each other on TikTok so it was like oh I'll message him <sighs> anyways I messaged this guy I don't know if he opened it you know I deleted the message because you know that's what I do. If you send a message and you don't want to know someone, oh, 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 delete it. Don't look at it. They'll still get it. You don't have to see it. Yeah. But, um, anyways, I'm kind of salty. He didn't say anything back. Um, but he's killing it on OnlyFans, it seems like. And he's like a model now, which is good for him. Still has a douchey vibe, but we all know I love it. Uh, yeah. But it was just so funny to see out of all the places in the world to see like this guy I went to summer camp with in Arkansas for seven years. Wild. It's also wild. I hooked up with so many people from summer camp after cause none of them found me attractive then. And then I went through like a weird thing. Actually one of them, uh, this guy Sawyer from summer camp. I don't want to like be rude about him cause he's really cute, but he hit on me and then asked another girl to the summer camp dance after he hit on me and I gave him an over the pants hand drove in a bus. Oh, so bad all around. That was disgusting. Anyways, he invited another girl to the summer camp dance and so then I had to go with a broom. I went with a fucking broom to the summer camp dance because no one asked me. That's it. That's the podcast because there's no end to that story except I went with a fucking broom. Yeah, so people who think it was popular, I went to a dance with a fucking broom. It's wild. I get I'm hot now, but I'm hot because I was bullied. I was bullied into being beautiful. Fuck you guys. Also, I've been beautiful the whole time. Y'all are just stupid and sleepy. So yeah, if you're a girl at a summer camp dance with a broom, just know that it gets better. You'll eventually have sex with people and you'll have to tell them to be mean to you because you can't handle when someone's nice to you because you'll get a crush on them. That's what I'm dealing with now. Anyways, I love you guys. Um, that was me oversharing today. Okay, that was, I don't know how to end this, I guess. <sighs> Go for a walk. 
go for a walk today and keep having consensual sex. If you're going to have sex, make sure it's consensual. Okay, bye.